Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. A Not-So-Quiet Night. Written by Echoing Cascade. Chief of Security, Orisa, was writing his report on yesterday's altercation with the Nebula Express, a dingy bar on the promenade, to a new director of operations of refueling station 2319. It was only me and Constable Uri at the office. The others were at the retirement party for Officer Minnesota. Everything was fine. Nothing but routine work until we were called out for a brawl at the Nebula Express bar. We got our gear and reluctantly started to make our way there. But before we left, a second message arrived. The fighters were death worlders, humans, no less. I grabbed my special human gear and Yuri equipped the anti-tank portable cannon. Not sure why, since it would probably just really annoy a human if he managed to get hit one at all. I told him as much, but he was never a bright lad to begin with. First day on the job, he insisted he would replace me by the end of the week, and then bring an interior decorator to fix my office. Everyone laughed and thought that he was a funny guy, until he brought his decorator the following day to take measurements. Our line of work is risky, and no one likes to partner with a delusional moron, hence why I'm stuck with him most of the time and why he wasn't invited to the party. By the time we got there, the two humans, who were clearly intoxicated on the bar's only human drink, Nebula Shots, which I've been told taste like a bleach-flavored jack percolated in dirty socks, were in the middle of a shouting match, but things were not looking good. One was starting to push the other. I've been around humans long enough to see that it would not stop there. As you've probably read in my files, I've served as a liaison officer for the 42nd Marine Recon Unit prior to my military discharge, and during my time with them, I became friends with their captain. He taught me a lot about humans. Some of it was even useful. And on this particular night, it would save my life. While I was slowly approaching the pair, making sure I had no weapon in hand, I asked in my most authoritarian voice, Well, well, well! What's all this then? I was told that it was a ritual to say this given the current situation. They both turned as one and looked at me, which is when I heard Constable Yuri yelp. I turned to look at him and saw it fly past me. It was a sort of footwear, a sandal made of synthetic material, with two straps and a V and the rubber sole. It spun like a throwing knife and hit one human square in the forehead, who grunted in pain. The other human began to laugh, but then the diminutive female human, who had thrown the strange weapon, ran past me before I could get out another word, picked up the weapon, and hit the laughing man in the back of the head with a sound eerily reminiscent of cracking chitin. This is where the defecation hit the air recirculator. Constable Uri panicked and fired the cannon at the woman, whose frame barely moved on the impact. The two men's eyes went wide, and their demeanor changed. They suddenly looked very sober and very scared. The woman hadn't looked happy to begin with, but now, now she was furious. As she slowly made her way to Constable Uri, I finally noticed a uniform. She was human military, some sort of officer, and the two idiots behind her were likely soldiers under her command. Constable Uri asked me what to do in a trembling voice. I pointed to the two human males behind an advancing female. They were frantically gesturing for Uri to drop his weapon and run. Do as the terrified death wilders say, and do it fast. He dropped the cannon and ran to the station prison, where he locked himself in the most secured cell, proving he might not actually be completely brain dead. The problem was that I was still there, and my job demanded I defuse the situation. Luckily, I had my human gear, and by the time she was within striking distance, I grabbed the box I kept for such an occasion and opened it. Chocolate, ma'am! That stopped her in her tracks. She looked nonplussed, but curious. A good sign. She moved very cautiously towards the profit box. She reminded me of a rodent trying to pry a tasty parcel from a trap. If my life wasn't on the line, it would have been funny. She took one and ate it, and then smiled from ear to ear and grabbed the box from my hands. She then turned around in a semi-crouch, and with her left arm covering the box, as if to protect it, she proceeded to eat several of the candies in quick succession. 
On the human males laughed, at which point she gave him a glare that dropped the room's temperature by several degrees. I simply looked at the scene and didn't say a word. Captain Duran had been very clear. When dealing with an angry woman, do not speak unless spoken to. Remember that everything you say can and will eventually be used against you. After she was satisfied, she presented me with a box of chocolates. It was still nearly half full. I shook my head and said, No, ma'am, keep it. It's the least I can do for the inconvenience. Another rule, as told by Captain Duran, never try to get between an angry woman and her chocolate. Even if she tells you that you can take one, don't. It's a trap. The woman smiled, snapped her fingers, and the two idiots followed her back to the ship, where I have no doubt she chewed them up and spit them out. But what happens on their ship is out of my jurisdiction, so who cares? In conclusion, I would like to take from Constable Uri's next month's salary the funds to buy another box of premium Belgian assorted chocolates from my personal back channels. They will be put with the rest of my human gear, four German beers in permanently chilled cans, and a large bag of salted pretzels. While I know these items are very expensive, I believe that instances like this prove that they are worth every credit. End of story. Story number two, the Terran Philharmonic Orchestra, written by Devara Kui. Good evening, everyone. My name is Leonard Hector Tuscanani, conductor of the Terran Philharmonic Orchestra. Thank you all for joining us for this momentous occasion. The first public display of human cultural traditions for the galaxy at large. We are honored to have been trusted by our people and welcomed by you, our new friends. In time, you will come to hear all our vocal works and mixed works using both voices and instruments, as well as see, hear, smell, and taste, and feel the myriad of other vehicles of human expression. But tonight's performance will simple number of instrumental works, some are so historically important that they defined epochs. Some are so popular that every human knows them. And some are so emotional that they take the place of words and art as media of expression. Many of you may question how sounds can have feelings. To humans, all of our senses represent feelings. Our strongest memory triggers our smells. Paintings and pictures can evoke empathy, despair, or joy. A dance can convey love or hate, and a few soft notes can make battle-hardened infantrymen kneel and weep. The people on stage are consummate professionals. They have dedicated their entire lives to perfecting their craft, and have reached the pinnacle of human achievement in orchestral music. They were selected from the most elite ensembles on Earth and elected to join together to create the group that you see before you. A heretofore unheard of conglomeration of prowess that is vitally driven to share its passions with not just their planet, but their galaxy. Tonight's program will feature three works and should run a brisk 65 Terran minutes with no intermission. The first is by Ludwig von Beethoven, a four-note opening motive with which has been known to nearly all humans since he penned it just over 200 years ago. Beethoven's Symphony No. 5 in C minor is in four movements and will run approximately 35 Terran minutes. Please note that it is human tradition to delay one's applause until the fourth movement's conclusion. The second work is brief albeit stirringly emotional, string orchestra composition that will run about 11 Terran minutes. Samuel Barber wrote a Dago for strings and sent it on to one of my distant relatives, a renowned conductor in his own time, after which it became regarded as one of the most deeply affecting pieces in our musical repertoire. Even after playing it literally thousands of times, some of the musicians on stage regularly tear up as they reach the piece's climactic wail. Our third 
And final entry in tonight is the 19 minute Jazz Piano Concerto by George Gershwin. His Rhapsody in Blue is paceful, inventive, and energetic. It features Thelonious Vladimir Richter on piano, and a video feed of his hands will be broadcast so all may appreciate the virtuosity with which he approaches an lifting arrangement that traverses multiple genres and demands rapid textural changes. We hope that you enjoy our performance. All performers will be available after the concert to discuss their craft and answer any questions you may have. And now, without further ado... The conductor nodded the final conclusion at the audience and turned to the players. The galaxy's largest performance hall filled with hundreds of thousands of beings watching with unbroken attention. The hall was eerily silent as he wrapped the black music stand with his baton exactly once and snapped both arms to shoulder height. The multicolored faces of the Terran Philharmonic Orchestra, all dressed in perfectly clean black and white, instantly abandoned their relaxed postures and assumed an almost predatory readiness, eyes wrapped arms and hands poised to strike. The conductor inhaled sharply as he raised his arms baton pointing straight up before crashing it down. An instant later, the hall exploded in sound. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click with energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just quickly want to thank the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia Barkey, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gaster, Arcadian, Lord Azrakal, and Joe Kumbaka.